Okay, one thing that I wanted to point out here was that it's important to test things as you go. I have, uh, so far, right here with this set, I've wired the eyeballs together, um, the LEDs within the eyeballs, and I'm just going to very quickly test them to make sure that the colors are all working, and they are, so I can go ahead and solder on my extension wire. Okay, now that I've got the eyes wired, I'm going to dry I'm gonna dry fit them into the skull that I've already taken a lot of material out of. This was the skull that uh, I recently did the tutorial on, on how to build one of these Traxel skulls. So as you can see, the eyes fit in there fairly well. However, Looks like I'm going to need to trim out some more material um, from the skull. And you have two options here. You can either trim off the bottom of the brackets uh, or you can trim the bottom of the skull. And you're going to end up doing a little bit of both probably. And there's a whole lot of material that you can take out of this skull before you actually get into the nasal cavity. And even if you do get into the nasal cavity, um, it's not terribly noticeable once you get the skull uh, finished and stained. So I'm going to fiddle with it a little bit, see how I can get it to fit. One thing that I'm, the other thing that I need to do is uh, where the holes are in this plate, I'm going to need to uh, drill corresponding holes in the skull plate itself. So we'll call this the eye plate and this the skull plate. We're going to mate them together and make sure that they're centered properly. Might have to slide uh, the eye plate around a little bit, which is why I make these holes a little bit larger. There are two holes here already. I'm guessing that the Triaxial guys have got an eye kit in there um, in somewhere that they'll have ready soon, that they'll sell maybe next year, within the next year or two. That's probably what these two holes are for. But uh, we won't be using those holes. I'll be drilling new ones. Be back uh, in a bit once I get uh, some more material cut out of the, either the skull or the bottom of this eye kit. All right, we're about ready to put everything back together. I did trim out some more material. You can see how much came out of these eyes. In fact. Here's a, uh, a different skull that I haven't really drilled any uh, much material out of. You can see how big those eye openings are now. Um, if you look down into the top, you can see I've taken out all of this material here, which was part of the forehead, part of the eye channel. And the eyes now um, fit through the holes. And then I took a whole lot out of the very bottom here. And you can see how much you can take out without really doing any damage. I did nick into the side, uh, the other side of the, the face, but you really won't be able to notice that on the outside. Don't worry about going in, you know, if, if, you, if you get there, just stop, that's the edge. You can also see right in here, um, it starts to get, I almost went into the sinus cavity on this one, but not quite. Again, that's not a huge deal, there's still a whole lot of material right through here if you need to take it out. And I went down pretty far uh, right here into these cavities, these pockets here, and it seems like it's just solid plastic all the way through to the nasal cavity there. The, um, I also took a little bit more off the bottom of the um, eye plate uh, on both sides so that I could fit it in there. So I guess my original... Um, my original estimate that this could be two and a quarter inches. Uh, you really just need to take into account that it needs to drop down into there two and a quarter inches. Every one of these plates is going to be different um, in the height that it sits in the skull. So what you're going to want to do is dry fit everything and you might want to consider just cutting a little bit off the top of the plate itself 
um, if you find that you're not able to get down into the skull and that the eyes are too low. So pretty easy to fit it all in here now. Um, I'll leave the eye power out and it just drops in front first. Oop, don't forget to drop your um, jaw servo linkage back into your arm, back into the pocket where it goes. And lots of servo wires to move out of the way. Pretty good, pretty good dry fit. And that's what the eyes look like. They're going to end up probably a little bit high in the sockets, and that's okay. Um, it's a personal preference where they end up. You can still do more adjusting as you need to get it all to fit in there. There we go. So that's what the end. Up, that's what the kit. How it fits. You just have to screw it all together and test the lights again. Now, also, because we didn't bolt down, you know, we didn't attach the tubes inside. You can still manipulate the eyes if you want them to come out farther. See, right now they're kind of um, not quite flush with the forehead. You can push them out, you can slide them in, uh, it's your personal preference. Um, I kind of like them so that you can see the sides of the eyes, but not too much farther than that. And I'm going to bolt this all together and I will test the eyes in just a second. Alright, here's an example of the finished eye kit. Looks pretty good. I'm using the Cheapy Creepy controller from Tractal Skull Lab. It actually allows you to dim the LEDs and it just plugs directly into your servo controller so you can use your software with it without having to do anything special. Um, so it, it, it actually takes servo commands and converts um, the servo control commands into uh, the LEDs pretty nice. Anyway, you get the idea. The lighting in here doesn't really do this thing justice. I'll be probably doing a video in the next couple of days to show you staining. That's the last step for this particular skull. And that's about it. This has been the Graveyard Workshop. I'm Scott. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I'm hoping you're making use of it. You guys have a great day.